Hello everyone, this is the History Spectrum channel. In this video, we will discuss the imaginary monsters, the vampires. We will also discuss some of their surprising stories. So please watch until the end. The earliest vampires came from Mesopotamia. Lilitu, who was handed down in ancient Mesopotamia, was probably one of the first vampires and embodies the fear of the night and wind. The people of ancient Mesopotamia feared her greatly because they believed that Lilitu attacked children and young men at night. Legend has it that Lilitu would fly through the night sky and attack people unexpectedly, and her appearance still influences many vampire tales. Lilitu is the archetype of the vampire, an ancient and well-told tale of a vampire who rules the night world with terror. In ancient Greece, the Vrykolakas are the dead of ancient Greece, who seek the blood of the living and are symbols of fear. They were considered to be those who had died, an unjust death or whose burial rites had not been properly performed and it was believed that their spirits would find rest by feeding on the blood of the living. In particular, tales of Vrykolakas were told on Greek islets and in villages, where it was said that he would emerge from his tomb at night and terrorize the villagers. The legend of Vrykorakas in ancient Greece reflects a deep fear and concern for death in the afterlife. The symbol of fear in ancient civilizations was feared and revered as a symbol of death, rebirth, and impure power. These legends served as a means to promote understanding of inexplicable illness and death, and to maintain social order and morality. For example, in Egypt, it was believed that those who were defeated in battle with the sun, God would be resurrected at night and threaten the living. Also, in India, blood-sucking rikshasa were handed down. These tales illustrate how ancient civilizations interpreted the unknown forces in afterlife, and how they positioned their fears in their culture. Medieval Europe, Vampire Hunt during a plague pandemic, the legend of the vampire became a symbol of people's fears. During the Black Death of the 14th century, many people blamed vampires for spreading the plague and blamed supernatural forces for the nighttime reanimation of the dead to spread the disease. They feared that the dead would come back to life at night and spread the plague. In medieval Europe, the legend of the vampire was popularized as a way to make the real life horror of the plague more understandable. Various methods were devised and widely believed to protect against vampires, including garlic and holy water. People used time-honored folklore and religious rituals to protect themselves from vampires. These methods provide psychological reassurance as a countermeasure against supernatural beings. Hanging garlic at the entrance to a house or sprinkling holy water over the tomb of the dead were common. The legend of driving a stake through the heart was also popularized as a way to put vampires to sleep forever. These measures illustrate people's attempts to confront the horror that is the vampire and remain an important part of vampire lore today. Throughout history, vampire hunts have been real and well documented. When faced with death or illness that society could not understand, vampire hunts were one way to hold people accountable for unexplainable events. Vampire panics, which were particularly common in the 18th century, involved villagers suspecting the deceased of being vampires, digging up graves, and staking the bodies. Vampire hunts are a form of vampire legend. Vampire hunts illustrate how deeply rooted vampire legends were in the minds of the people and provide a valuable example for understanding the fears and countermeasures of medieval society. Eastern European vampires, Count Dracula and Slavic lore. Count Dracula is a character born out of a combination of Bram, Stoker's novel and an actual historical figure. Stoker created a new image of the vampire by combining the brutal stories of the real 15th century Vlad Sepesh Dracul with the folklore about vampires of the time. Vlad Sepesh was known to skewer his enemies, and this brutality contributed to Dracula's terrifying image. Combined with the popularity of Gothic novels at the end of the 19th century, Dracula also established himself as the eternal vampire. Count Dracula became the world's most famous vampire through a mixture of real history and fiction. The Slavic region is rich in its own vampire lore, each conveying its own unique horror. These legends reflect the region's unique culture, beliefs, and views of life and death, while having the universal theme of the return of the dead. For example, the Russian Yupur and the Polish Striga are believed to be active at night and attack the living. These tales have been told as a means of explaining unknown diseases and death or as moral lessons. Slavic vampire lore demonstrates the depth and diversity of Eastern European culture, each region, producing different forms of terror. Bram Stoker's Dracula blurred the boundaries between fiction and reality, and strongly influenced the image of the vampire. Stoker weaves actual history, geography, and the scientific knowledge of the time into his work, giving readers a sense of reality and renewing the vampire legend. Dracula is set in Transylvania and London, 
and uses settings familiar to Victorian readers of the time. Making the story more accessible and realistic, it has helped propel vampires to the center of contemporary pop culture, and continues to influence many films, novels, and television shows. Bram Stoker's Dracula made the vampire, a timeless entity that continues to capture our imagination to this day. Unknown vampire legends from Asia and Africa. The Chinese Zhangxi, a unique vampire with rigid movements, is deeply rooted in Chinese folklore. The Zhangxi are feared as life suckers, and their movements are very specific, because they are based on the phenomenon of a stiffened body after death. Legend has it that the Zhangsheng is said to move in a bouncing motion, with its arms outstretched in front of it, and this characteristic movement has been depicted in many Chinese films and literature. The Zhangsheng is symbolic of the ideas of death and spirit in Chinese culture, creating a unique image of the vampire. The Adaes is a nocturnal blood-drinking entity feared in many parts of Africa. Adazes are widely believed to explain the causes of disease and death, as well as embody people's fear of nocturnal dangers. These creatures usually lurk in secluded areas and in the dark, and are said to target travelers and isolated individuals in particular. The legend of the Adaes illustrates the relevance of the natural and supernatural worlds in various regions of Africa, and reflects the universal fear of the night and the unknown. Vampire stories from around the world share common themes. While each region has its own unique characteristics, these stories are based on the universal fear and interest in death, spirits, and the unknown of the night, and have been transmitted across cultures and time. From the Chupacabra of South America, to the Aswang of the Philippines, to the vampires of Europe, local traditions have added their own interpretations, based on local environments and beliefs. These vampire tales express humanity's shared fear of death and the unknown and are told in different forms around the world. Alleged vampire figures in history. Since we have just discussed Vlad Zepesh, I will now talk about Elizabeth Botwari. Elizabeth Botwari was known as the Countess of Blood, and her brutal legend influenced vampire stories. Legend has it that she bathed in the blood of young girls to stay young. And this is associated with the motive for seeking blood in later vampire tales. In fact, she is said to have murdered hundreds of young women. And her brutality was feared at the time and has been the motif for many stories and films in later generations. The legend of Elizabeth Botwari is an example of how an actual historical event can be expanded into a supernatural story, which is still told today as part of the vampire legend. In modern times, vampires continue to be associated with subcultures and real-life figures in a variety of forms. Vampire imagery is deeply ingrained in contemporary culture through literature, film, television, and even those who choose to live as vampires. The real vampire community mimics the vampire lifestyle, including blood drinking rituals. In pop culture, vampires are portrayed as romantic or terrifying characters in various films and series. The presence of vampires in modern times illustrates how classic legends have evolved and continue to influence contemporary culture and personal identity. Surprising stories about vampires. There is an anecdote that in some medieval cultures, vampires had a special ointment that they applied to their skin to avoid sunlight. This ointment was supposedly intended to allow them to remain active during the day, and was actually a mixture of ordinary herbs and animal fats. Vampire legends have been widely used as a means of expressing human fears and anxieties through the themes of life after death, immortality, and beings that suck human blood. How was it? This video explained the vampire. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and like this video. History Spectrum